Welcome to this web lecture on the differentiation of mesoderm. So in this web lecture, we're going to sort of fill in this gap of what happens during development, after gastrulation, sort of concurrent with this process of neural tube development or neurulation, and prior to organogenesis, the development of the organs. Before watching this web lecture, you want to make sure that you have read in the book the chapter on the earlier stages of development. I will refer to them quite casually in this web lecture, so you want to make sure that you understand the processes of cleavage and you know what a blastula is and understand the basics of gastrulation. Even though the different groups of vertebrates can undergo this process of gastrulation in very, very different ways, in all vertebrates, it really is the most important time of your life. It results in the same three end products. And those three end products are first, the formation of the archenteron or the primitive gut. Secondly, it's during this process of gastrulation that the major axes of the body, the major directions are established. The dorsoventral axis from front to back, the anteroposterior axis going from head end to tail end, and the mediolateral axis are all established during this process. And finally, it results in the establishment of the three primary germ layers, the ectoderm, mesoderm, and endoderm. So let's quickly go over the adult structures that each of these germ layers give rise to. Let's start with the ectoderm. So ectoderm is primarily going to give rise to the outer covering of the body. So it's going to give rise to the epidermis of the skin. It's going to give rise to the end portions of the gut tube that are exposed to the environment. So the front portion of the mouth, the opening of the mouth, and also the opening of the anus or cloaca. But it's also going to give rise to the entire central nervous system, the brain and spinal cord. It's also going to be the source of these neural crest cells and the definitive versions of, of neural crest that give rise to all of these various structures, especially involved in the organization of the head are unique to the vertebrates. So we'll talk more about these very important neural crest cells in class. Now looking at the mesoderm, the mesoderm comes in three basic types. So early in development, these are referred to as the epimere, mesomere, and hypomere. The epimere is going to give rise to somites, and as we'll see as we go, these somites are going to divide into three divisions called the dermatome, myotome, and sclerotome which are in turn going to give rise to the dermis, that under layer of the skin, the segmental body muscles, so the axial and limb musculature, and also the vertebral column. The intermediate mesoderm, or the mesomere, gives rise to the urogenital system. We'll look at that in more detail toward the end of the semester when we look at those systems in particular. And then the lateral plate mesoderm, or the hypomere, divides into two sections, the somatic hypomere and the splanchnic hypomere, giving rise to the somatic and splanchnic lateral plate mesoderm, which are basically going to form the structure called the coelom, in addition to giving rise to the lateral paired appendages that are seen in nathostomes and some structures in the reproductive system, and then the splanchnic Lateral plate mesoderm is also going to play a role in forming the heart and blood vessels. Endoderm is very easy to remember because all it gives rise to are the gut tube and structures that are developmentally derived from the gut tube, such as the liver and gallbladder, pancreas, uh, the urinary bladder, and parts of the cloaca. So these are all going to be derived from endoderm. So now let's focus our attention specifically on the mesoderm. Let's first look at this in an example of the chick embryo. So remember that the chick embryo develops as this blasted disc, this layer of cells, this layer of tissue kind of perched on top of this enormous yolk mass in the case of birds. So remember that gastrulation in the case of the chick is going to occur by ingression of cells from the top of this blastoderm down through the structure called the primitive streak and coming down into the interior of this little flat structure sitting on top of the yolk. So they're gonna just kind of flow inward through this primitive streak from both directions. And the end result of this process is going to be what we call a trilaminar disc. So this is a cross section through the embryo, this is all going to be the yolk underneath it, 
and this little structure sitting on top of it, which is going to give rise to the body of the bird. So again, we've got a layer of ectoderm, a layer of mesoderm, and a layer of endoderm, three layers leading to a trilaminar disc. So as this mesoderm starts to form and develop, we're gonna see that it's gonna to start to separate initially into three divisions. One part of the mesoderm is gonna spread out over the egg mass, and this is going to be the lateral plate mesoderm. There'll be another chunk of mesoderm forming medial to that, the intermediate mesoderm, remember that's going to give rise to the urogenital system, and then medial to that, right alongside the notochord, which is right here in the center, is going to be the development of a rod of tissue called paraxial mesoderm. So that's going to form a rod right alongside the notochord on either side of it. And that rod of tissue, that rod of paraxial mesoderm, is going to start to separate into little balls called somites. So let's take a look at what that looks like in an illustration and also in a micrograph. So here is looking at a dorsal view. And here we see the forming neural tube with these balls of tissue on either side of it. These are the somites. So in this micrograph, we can see here the notochord and these little somites. So these somites are going to form sequentially in an anterior to posterior fashion. So here we can still see some of this rod of tissue, the paraxial mesoderm, posteriorly and as the somites are forming in an anterior to posterior direction. So these somites are very, very important to the vertebrate body plan because they are the developmental basis of segmentation in vertebrates. So we'll see as we go that every structure in vertebrates that is a repeating segmental, what we call metameric structure, is gonna have its developmental basis in these somites. One somite will give rise to one of those repeating structures. So looking again at this illustration of the cross-section for developing trilaminar disc, as this lateral plate mesoderm is spreading out and surrounding the yolk mass, it's beginning to divide into its two sections, the splanchnic mesoderm that's going to be adjacent to the endoderm and the somatic mesoderm that is adjacent to the ectoderm. And these layers are going to become associated with each other into structures known as the somatopleur, which is the one layer of somatic lateral plate mesoderm combined with the layer of ectoderm overlying it, and the splanchnopleur, which is the combination of the layer of splanchnic lateral plate mesoderm and the underlying layer of endoderm associated with it. And in between these two layers is the structure called the coelom. So let's take a look at what this looks like in the amphibian developing gastrula. So here is our developing tadpole. What we're looking at here is sort of a cut, a cross-sectional cut right through the middle of it. And so here we see again the somite, the intermediate mesoderm, and the lateral plate mesoderm also in the amphibian gastrula growing down and surrounding this yolk mass. Here we have the developing neural tube, the notochord, and the archenteron or the primitive gut kind of surrounded by this yolk. And so again, we see the somites alongside the notochord, the intermediate mesoderm in between, the lateral plate mesoderm growing down and surrounding that yolk sac. If we look at a little bit later stage in amphibian development, what we notice is that as these layers of lateral plate mesoderm grow down and meet in the center, they're going to sort of squish together and form this sheet of tissue, both ventrally and dorsally, they're going to meet and form these sheets of tissue called mesenteries. And the function of the mesenteries is to suspend and hold the gut tube in place within the body cavity. So remember in between these two layers of lateral plate mesoderm is the coelom. And notice that there's nothing growing or developing inside the coelom. The coelom is an isolated cavity. And so what's gonna happen as the gut grows and develops, it's going to sort of push into this balloon until it's completely squished together. And what's gonna end up being is just basically two layers of tissue 
with some serous or slippery fluid in between that allows the gut tube to move and grow independently of this outer body wall. So this is what we call the tube within a tube body plan of vertebrates. The gut is the inner tube, the body wall is the outer tube, and they're separated by the structure called the coelom. But remember, there are no actual organs inside of the coelom. There's nothing inside the coelom but a little bit of fluid. We also see at this stage that these somites are starting to divide into their three components. Closest to the neural tube and the notochord is the sclerotome, which is going to develop into the bony vertebrae that are going to surround and protect this neural tube, the myotome, and so this is going to form the segmental body musculature, and then lateral to that is the dermatome, which is going to form that inner layer of the skin, the dermis. So now let's go back and look at our chick embryo and think a little bit about how these different processes are unfolding at the same time. So at the same time the bird is undergoing this differentiation of mesoderm, this process of neurulation is starting to occur. In this very early stage, this neural plate beginning to form, this thickening of the epidermis just above the notochord, and what's going to happen is this is going to start to form these little ridges and make this sort of U-shape, and this is going to be happening concurrent with this expansion of the lateral plate mesoderm, out and around the yolk, the separation of the lateral plate mesoderm into the splanchnic and somatic lateral plate mesoderm. And this folding up of the neural tube and its separation from the overlying ectoderm is going to happen concurrently with the beginnings of the folding of the body into this tube within a tube body structure. So we're starting to see now this ectoderm kind of curling around and starting to enfold the gut. We see the somatic lateral plate mesoderm kind of pinching in and it's eventually going to pinch the gut off the rest of the way. And as we proceed this process of kind of curling around and forming that tube within a tube is going to happen along the length of the body. The other thing that we're starting to see at this point is that some folds of the somatopleur are starting to expand up and around the embryo of the chick. And so this is the start of extra embryonic membranes that are really important in amniotes. And so we're going to see how this process proceeds to form these extra embryonic or fetal membranes in the next web lecture when we compare the development of birds to the development of mammals.